Hello guys, welcome, welcome back to the channel, where we review stories that beautiful people like yourselves post on the internet. So we got four stories for you today. The first one is about the unreasonable demands of an entitled mother-in-law concerning the OP's half-sister. Let's take a look at the title. Mother-in-law told me that I can't invite my half-sister to my baby shower since she's not a part of my quote-unquote real family. So I told her she's not even my family either, and now she's offended. I, 24 female, have been with my husband for almost five years now, and we've been married for two, but his mother has never liked me, no matter how much I've tried. After the first few years, I gave up trying to impress her, since she's made it pretty clear that she wasn't going to accept me. Anyway, I'm pregnant with my first child now, and my husband and I are absolutely thrilled. In a very surprising show of support, my mother-in-law, Jean, decided to throw a baby shower for me as well. I was taken aback since she'd never taken any interest in anything to do with me and had avoided speaking to me at any cost. But I was pleasantly surprised and thought maybe the new baby had softened her and opened her up to building a healthy relationship with me. I was wrong. I'm pretty far along now. In my seventh month and my baby shower invites were sent out this week. I've said I wanted to keep it small, just a select few family members and a few friends. Of course, my mother and sister must be there, and I thought that was clear. But when I received a call from my sister, Lily, 22 female, about how mom had received her invite but not her, I was shocked, since Joan had assured me time and time again that she'd made sure that everyone I had mentioned would definitely be receiving an invite. I had left all the planning up to her since I'm away, it was just easier. That was a mistake. When I called and asked Joan why Lily hadn't received her invitation, she told me very casually that she didn't think it was appropriate for her to be there, since she's not quote-unquote actually related to me. This is technically true since Lily is actually my half-sister. My dad had an affair with another woman when I was two years old. Unfortunately, both of them passed away in the same car accident, and my mom decided to adopt Lily and raise her as her own, since nobody else was willing to take her in. I was too young to understand it, but, but since my mom and Joan had a few friends in common back then, Joan had always known and made sure I knew how she disapproved of Lily. And even though we learned that we weren't related by blood when I turned 16, we never let it matter since I loved her as a sister, and I knew she loved me just as much. We were sisters, and that was that. Nobody addressed it or questioned it. Not until Joan anyway. I was quite shocked that she would say that to my face, and it took me a few minutes to compose myself. I told her that Lily is my family, we have our dad in common, and she went on to lecture me about how my dad was a man without morals and values and that Lily was a quote unquote mistake and bad luck and she didn't want her at a happy event like a baby shower. I began losing my patience and told her that I wanted Lily there and that I didn't care whether or not she liked her since she's my sister and I wouldn't attend if she didn't come. She kept on insisting that Lily was not my family and she didn't want to be embarrassed in front of all of her friends. Oh yes, she went against my decision and invited her own judgy friends as well. I finally got so annoyed at the way that she was acting that I told her that even though she isn't related to me and neither do I consider her my family, so maybe she shouldn't be there either and hung up. I texted all of my friends and family who were invited to the baby shower and informed them that I'd be informing them about the place and time later since there was no way that I was letting Joan take control of who came to my baby shower. I even spoke to the event planners and told them to put everything on hold until I said so. It's still a few weeks away, so I'm not losing my money either. I'll redo everything if that's what it takes. When she found out about all this, Joan showed up at my house and demanded an explanation as to why I'd put everything on hold when she planned everything so meticulously. I told her that I'm not doing anything according to her plans anymore and she and her friends were no longer invited to my baby shower, since they're not my family at all, and neither do they seem to have any love and respect for me at all. She began to howl in the living room about how cruel I was being, how I first stole her son away, and how I was trying to do the same with her grandchildren. That was the craziest thing that she could have said, and of course, she said it. She wouldn't even let me speak, and kept hurling accusations and insults at me, until I finally screamed at her to get the hell out of my house and stay away. She refused to leave so I just went to my room and locked myself in. Around half an hour later, when my husband returned, he seemed pretty confused since his mother had already gotten to him 
and started trying to turn him against me by telling him that I was trying to keep her grandchildren away from her and sabotaging the baby shower. I explained to him everything that had happened and he was pretty annoyed too. He told his mother to leave, much to her surprise, since she had obviously expected him to be mad at me. He told her that she could either apologize to me and take back what she said or leave and she chose to leave after letting us know that we were being horrible people and karma would get us. It's been a few days since that happened and now, I don't know why, maybe it's the pregnancy hormones but I feel kind of guilty. My husband is upset since he is pretty close to his mother but is trying his best not to show it for my sake. I feel bad simply because he's a little down in the dumps and I don't know how excited he's been about the baby. Even Joan was overjoyed to welcome her grandchild so I know I'm hurting her as well but I know that what I said and did was necessary as well since she can't just speak about me and my family that way. I'm at a loss as to what I should do about the situation right now. I feel weird which is why I'm here. Am I the a-hole for uninviting my mother-in-law from my baby shower? It's been one and a half weeks since that huge scene with my mother-in-law and it's been hard. I decided not to apologize to her or even speak to her regarding what happened because after reading the responses, I knew that I wasn't wrong and neither was I overreacting. I told Lily and my mother about what had happened and Lily was very upset. Not because Joan had insulted her, but more because Joan had been treating me badly and she was almost going to call her up and give her a piece of her mind about the way she'd been acting with me. But I only managed to stop her by telling her that she wasn't worth the trouble. In the meantime, my mother-in-law got over her sadness about not being part of my baby shower anymore and took to texting my husband and trying to convince him to leave his 7 month pregnant wife. Yeah, that's right. He probably ignored it the first few times, but when it got too much, he told me everything that his mother had said and informed me that we'd be going no contact with Joan. I already blocked her from all of my socials and also blocked her number. She can't get through to me at all. Heck, I would even have moved houses if that was possible but unfortunately we can't do that. My mother and sister have also started planning my baby shower, again, the proper way for me. They really want me to have one, even though I personally had lost all interest in it after the whole fiasco with Joan. But I'm really grateful that my husband, mother and sister are going to such lengths for me. I'm just really happy that I have such wonderful people in my life, no matter how badly people like Joan treat me. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the baby shower now. I had my baby shower yesterday and boy, it was definitely crazier than your average baby shower, courtesy of my crazy mother-in-law. My mama had ended up changing both the venue and timing of the baby shower so that anyone who wasn't invited by me wouldn't know where to go. But unfortunately, somehow my mother-in-law found out. I'm guessing she bribed someone on the planning staff to tell her and showed up. Thankfully, it was towards the end when everyone was leaving since she didn't get the time right. There must have been only a handful of my friends, my mom and Lily, who were still there and helping me pack all my gifts. Joan came in screaming about how I had ruined her and her son's life and how I didn't deserve her son at all. She'd even gotten some of her friends to accompany her and record the whole thing. I have no idea what she thought that was a good idea because all it took for me to put an end to that was a threat to call the cops if she even took a step toward me. Her friends were pretty quick to leave as soon as the cops were mentioned since they already looked pretty unwilling to be there. Unfortunately, Joan didn't care about that and even went on to dare me to call the cops so that she could tell them how I was stealing her son from her. My own mom intervened and told her to get the hell out. I had never seen her that insanely pissed off. But Joan went on arguing with her and eventually Lily, mom and I were shouting at her at the top of our voices. It wasn't until one of my friends had the good sense to call my husband up and ask him to come and break up the argument that we stopped. I was physically and mentally exhausted from all the fighting and I ended up crying there. My husband was so mad that he told his mother that if she even dared to come near to me again then he would make sure that he got a restraining order against her. He took her aside and I don't know what went down between them but all I know is that the next thing I saw was Joan leaving the venue in tears. But honestly I don't even care. She deserves it. She's been trying to ruin my marriage for the longest time now. I'm glad she's out of our lives for good and that my baby will never have to deal with her negativity at all. Last update here. I had my baby a few weeks ago. My beautiful daughter is here in the world and I can hardly believe it. Joan hasn't come to the hospital or hasn't visited since my baby shower. The last time I heard about her was when my husband told me that his mom had texted him 
We wished both of us luck a day after the baby was born. Maybe someday I'll forgive her, but not now. Lily is super happy to be an aunt, and my mom is spoiling us all rotten with gifts every other day. I'm grateful for the love. Not the a-hole. Your mother-in-law is the a-hole for sure. What kind of crazy person says that about someone else's family? Disgusting. Congratulations on the baby. I'm glad you guys cut your mother-in-law off. She deserves it. Not the a-hole. Definitely not the a-hole. Your mom is a wonderful woman, and she's raised two wonderful women OP. Alright, let's get into our second story. My boyfriend and I bought our first home from an elderly couple in January of 2022. Initially, I kept in contact with one of them, let's call her Barb, in the event that we might receive some of her mail or something. Contact was very occasional and was always something along the lines of asking if I received a package of hers or that she wanted to mail us a key that she found that went to the lock on our shed. Months after we moved in, around early October, we received some dining chairs in a box addressed to Barb. A day or two later, a repeat of the exact same shipment arrived. I attempted to contact Barb, but my calls would not get through. A few weeks later, I came home from work and my boyfriend, who frequently gets home before me, told me that he was starting to feel guilty about the situation and asked me to follow him to our garage. Apparently, packages containing furniture and decor had been coming regularly for weeks and we now had a garage full of boxes that were not addressed to us. My boyfriend had been storing the boxes and assuming the shipments would stop, but they continued. We doubled down and tried harder to contact Barb with the help of other neighbors. We finally got in touch with her, and she explained that she had lost her phone, and that's why I was unable to contact her for some time. I explained the situation to her, and she gave me permission to open some of the items so that I could describe them to her. She then told me that she had not ordered any of the items. It turns out that, prior to moving, Barb had a friend of hers help her order furniture for her new home, as she can't see well and was having trouble navigating the furniture website. This friend used her own computer to order Barb's things as a favor. I immediately became concerned that Barb was being robbed, and I urged her to contact her bank first and then her friend second. Barb let me know days later that the charges were not fraudulent. It was a simple case of forgetting to change the shipping address, and the friend wanted to set up a time to come pick the furniture up from me. I explained that myself and my boyfriend work a lot, and I wanted to set up a time when I wouldn't be home alone. I don't know this person, and I couldn't lift half of the furniture by myself to move it anyway. I began receiving calls from Barb and her friend day and night, asking me to find the time to let them collect the items. After a few weeks, my boyfriend and I finally had a weekend off together. I messaged both Barb and her friend with a day and time, and received no reply from either person. By the first of the year, still nothing. I began receiving calls again at the end of January, after we had already gotten rid of most of the items since we had not heard back. I have not been answering the calls. It has been over a year that we have lived here, and several months since we received the furniture. Am I the a-hole here? I was not home when any of the items were delivered. I worked long hours. I waited three months prior to getting rid of the stuff with no contact from Barb or her non-elderly friend. I did not have an address for either individual. The much younger friend is the actual owner and orderer of the items, not the elderly woman. She failed to change the shipping address after ordering items of her own months after she helped Barb order furniture. The elderly woman was not out of any money because of this, but her friend is, and I understand that makes me an a -hole. Additionally, I did not sell any of the items. I gave some away and threw away some others. Last, Barb is the one who actually called me twice this month. I have not heard anything from the friend who is the actual owner of the items. But did you try and get them their packages? You ignore them for months, then have one day notice that this weekend suits, and they weren't immediately onto that with zero notice. You accepted the deliveries. You may find that you're legally liable, as you made no effort to allow them to collect the furniture before throwing it out. For information purposes, I called them at least 10 times as well as messaged them. I did not ignore them for months. I waited two and a half weeks until my boyfriend and I had a weekend off, and had told them I was going to wait until then. I did not accept the deliveries. They were made during the day when I was not home and did not require a signature. They were left under my carport. I had no address to bring them to, even if I wanted to hand deliver them. The effort was made. They did not follow through. You're the a-hole. Based on what you wrote, they wanted their items and it sounds like you made it next to impossible to pick them up, except one brief weekend. When they immediately didn't reply, you disposed everything. 
You're the a-hole. You and your boyfriend found plenty of time to arrange for other people to get this furniture, but only offered one time to the rightful owners. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video so far and you want to be an a-hole to the like button, you can make sure to put all their wet clothes in a bag and just leave it there for days so that it stinks. Alright, let's get into our next story. I, 26 female, and my partner, 26 male, have three kids between us. I have two daughters, 9 female and 7 female, and he has a son, 12 male. My stepson used to stay with us at the weekends, but as he has to share a room with my daughters, he has decided he doesn't want to stay anymore, which is fair enough. He's getting older and wants space. Plus, he's getting too old to share now. I don't have a problem with this at all. He needs to do what is best for him, and I'm not going to force him to come to my house all the time when he doesn't want it, but he also doesn't want to spend any time here whatsoever. He wants to spend all his time at his grandma's. Now, we all went away last year. He had his own room, and we had a relatively good time. I was planning on booking a holiday for the end of this year, but I told my partner that I wasn't paying for SS to come with us, as by the time we go, he would have spent zero time with the family and probably wouldn't enjoy coming away with us for a week as he doesn't enjoy being around my kids anymore and doesn't really like me. My partner threw a massive tantrum and said I was purposely leaving him out of stuff just to be spiteful but in reality, I'm the one who pays for everything. Holidays, clothes, food, activities and so forth when we are away and I want to enjoy myself and let my kids enjoy it without SS moaning about being here in the first place, which he will and did the last time we went away. And I don't want to pay for someone who doesn't want to be here in the first place. Am I the a-hole? Should I just pay for him and get on with it? You're the a-hole. He doesn't spend time with your family because you don't have a room for him. As a step-parent, it is wild to me that you didn't even think to include him. If he doesn't want to go, then that's totally fine. But not to even consider inviting him is crazy. You're the a-hole. You knew he had a child when you met him, so you must have known he would have had to be part of your life. I feel sorry for the lad. He probably feels he's a bit of a spare part given that he can't even have his own space when he stays with you. I wouldn't want to stay there either. You should take him on a holiday and allow him to spend some quality time with his father. Well, let's get into our fourth and final story for today. I'm a female 33. Sister, Marnie, 35 female, has a 3-year-old daughter, Annabelle. I love my niece very, very much. But Marnie sets down no boundaries for her. Everything Annabelle does is age-appropriate, but as a parent, it's your job to help your child become the best person they can be. When Annabelle doesn't want to do something or needs to get her way, she screams. It's very loud and hard to ignore. Marnie and her husband instantly give in. As a mom of four, I completely understand it's hard to hear your child cry or be upset, and sometimes, yes, absolutely pick your battles. But others, the toddler can't win. Around the holidays, Marnie and I hung out a lot with the kids. At one point, we were headed to an aquarium. Marnie started going one way, and Annabelle started screaming. Marnie turns around and heads in a direction that will add 15 minutes to our route. When I asked why, she said that Annabelle likes passing a certain landmark on her way. However, Annabelle then started screaming she didn't want to see it, and halfway there, we turned around. It added more time, and my kids were annoyed. I let most of this go, as Annabelle is not my child. It isn't my vehicle or house where these predicaments take place. But then Marnie broke her leg while her husband was out of town. She needed help getting around and tending to Annabelle. I agreed they should stay with us. Last night, we pick up our kids from school, stopping at Annabelle's preschool last. Once we finally get her in the car, she didn't want to leave and Marnie let her just run around for 10 minutes. Wouldn't let me grab her because she's the boss of her body. I'm exhausted. I still have to get home and cook. As I'm heading in one direction, Annabelle starts screaming for me to go in the other. I calmly explain that way is no longer and we don't have the time. Marnie asks me to just make it easier. She doesn't want to hear her scream. Going that way will add more time to our drive. I say no again and keep driving, putting on some kid-friendly music. My kids are trying to distract Annabelle. Marnie starts crying, saying things like, It's okay baby, we'll be home soon. Oh, I know you're so sad, this isn't very nice. The thing is, Annabelle stopped screaming, keeping in mind, she never shed a tear, just screamed, after 5 minutes when she realized she wasn't getting her way. Marnie later told me that I was horrible for forcing her to listen to her daughter scream. Would it have been so hard to not add stress to her? My husband agrees that I did the right thing, but also pointed out that Marnie and Annabelle are going through a stressful time. 
Am I the a-hole? Holy God, your sister and her husband are huge a-holes. The level of entitlement your sister has as you're caring for her kid and her. F that noise. Pun intended. I let her navigate the broken leg and screaming toddler on her own. You have four kids of your own. That's harder than dealing with one kid and a broken leg. Source, was a step-parent to a very moody four-year-old whilst in a wheelchair and with a broken arm. Not the a-hole. I have a three-year-old that's a screamer. She's a lot better than she used to be. Because I don't negotiate with ear terrorists. You don't have to eat dinner, kid, but no candy. And I have pulled the car over and refused to drive until the screaming stopped. Your knees will end up a hellion if your sister keeps giving in. Not the a-hole. Alright guys, that's it for today's stories. Thank you very much for listening. Remember that if you have a story of your own, you can email it to us at the email down in the description. I also want to remind you to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel to keep listening to these stories. Thank you again for watching guys, and we will be seeing you in the next one.